What's up guys, our September Patreon rewards are finally available. If you're interested in picking up a full art brainstorm or Muldrotha the Gravetide, you can check out all the details at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the crack a pack series. I'm really hoping today we get a little bit of a better pool than we did in the last crack a pack. We had a pack of modern masters and unfortunately we really didn't get a very good rare in that one. Hopefully we get something awesome in this set. 10th edition has actually quite a lot of really good stuff. Crucible of Worlds of course comes to mind and a number of other cards that are out there that really are pretty high value stuff. So hopefully we get something interesting with this one. Uh, as always, we are going to go through this as if it is a pack one, pick one scenario. So we're going to do the best we can to figure out what our first round draft pick would be if we were drafting this set. I don't know technically if this counts as like a core set. Um, well, I guess technically, yes, it does. It is a core set. So my expectation is that it will not be quite as powerful uh, as your standard expansion. So we might be seeing a lot of somewhat basic cards, but again, we're going to go over everything. So our first card here is Avon Fisher. It's a 2-2 for three and a blue with flying. Uh, and when it's put into a graveyard from play, you can draw a card. So pretty straightforward again, but uh, a 2-2 two -two flyer for four, not bad. It's a little low uh, in the stats realm, but it is a flyer, so it's going to be evasive, hopefully going to be able to get in for a little bit of damage. Uh, and then it also has the, the added thing of replacing itself. If it dies, uh, you actually get to draw a card, which is actually really, really nice. Uh, being able to replace a card like this, fantastic. Honestly, not a bad start. Uh, I don't think it's a bomb or anything like that, but in the mid game, I don't think that this is a terrible card by any means. So uh, not too bad to start off with. Uh, our second card here, Aggressive Urge, an instant for one and a green target creature gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn, and then you draw a card. Uh, so this is your standard combat trick, but what's great about it uh, is it actually replaces itself as well, uh, which is apparently the theme of this set. So uh, any card that replaces itself is actually really, really nice just because you're not losing any card advantage. Uh, you're staying on top of it. You're still drawing into more stuff. This isn't the best combat trick, I would say, just because you're only getting that plus one, plus one, and you're paying two mana for that. It's a little bit low, but uh, obviously replacing itself pretty strong. Uh, and if I was in green, I would definitely consider running this. If nothing else, uh, it's a way of cycling through your deck, and I don't think that that's bad. So honestly, not a bad one, but uh, definitely Avon Fisher, a little bit higher on the list for me. <laughs> Uh, Spitting Earth is a sorcery for one and a red. It deals damage equal to the number of mountains you control to target creature. So uh, definitely, obviously, focused on removal spell. It does not hit the player, which is worth noting. Uh, a lot of times, uh, burn spells and things like that are really nice because they can hit players. In this case, it can't, and it's based on the number of mountains you control. Now, obviously, that can actually be a pretty high number, and that means that this is going to be able to deal with pretty high-level creatures if you really need it to. Uh, and especially if you're going to be in like a mono red or uh, focused on red, at least, uh, even if you're in multiple colors. So I actually really like this card uh, just because it scales so well. Uh, I don't know. Uh, again, I didn't draft during this time, so I don't know exactly how good this card is. But my assumption is it's actually pretty good, even if you're only getting in for three or four damage. For two mana, that's pretty solid. So I actually like this one a lot. My my guess is if you do pick this up, you kind of hold on to it for a little while until you really find a problem area or a problem creature that you really need to deal with. Uh, honestly, I think it's the strongest card we have so far. Avon Fisher, definitely very, very good, but I do think Spitting Earth is a little bit better. Uh, Highway Robber. Uh, is a 2-2 two, two for 2 and 2 black, and when it comes into play, you gain 2 life, and target opponent loses 2 life. So this is a very classic black card in that it uh, drains life from the opponent and you get that life back. Pretty cool, actually, just as a flagship black card. Um, it's not super strong, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, it's a 2-2 two, two for 4. That's pretty low. Yes, it does drain for 2 life, and I think that that sometimes is very relevant. However, uh, it doesn't really make up for it in any other way. It's not enough to really make me want to pick it super, super early. Now, honestly, as a four drop, if I just need a curve consideration slot, this is definitely something that I'd be 
probably pretty happy with, uh, but I just don't think it's that powerful. I think there are probably much better four drops that are going to outpower this, and in the long run, that matters more than that drain too. Just my personal opinion, but that's just the way I see it. Uh, cancel, very classic card. Instant for one and two blue. Very simply, counter target spell. Uh, what's nice about this is it can be any spell. A lot of times we see things like Essence Scatter or Negate uh, at two mana generally that focus on either countering non-creature spells or creature spells. In that instance, I tend to lean towards the creature spells in Limited. You're going to see a lot more creatures, and so it's actually nice to, to, to focus more on that than the Negate side of things. In this case, you can actually not have to focus on either one, and it's pretty good. Uh, counter spells, generally speaking, and limited, I think, are actually a little bit overvalued in comparison to regular constructed when it comes to uh, like three mana counters and things like that, like this cancel. Cancel is not a card you're ever going to play really in a constructed deck unless maybe somewhere in standard you might, but uh, in, in actual powerful formats, obviously, no. Uh, in limited, I think it's actually worthwhile running maybe one or two of if you're in that blue spells matters kind of deck. Uh, obviously you want to be focused on creatures and stuff like that though. So I don't value this too highly. Um, I'd much rather have like a strong creature at three or maybe, a. a uh, a ramp spell of some kind that helps me get to those stronger creatures but it is technically you can kind of count it as a removal spell a lot of the time and for that reason it's pretty good still like spitting earth a little bit better if i'm honest i think it has a little bit more potential and it's a little bit cheaper which i like uh fire breathing again very classic card enchant creature for one red you can pay a red and it gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn you can use that ability multiple times per turn so you can stack that as many times as you like uh honestly i don't love enchant creatures most of you guys know that um they're just not my favorite thing unfortunately they tend to open yourself up for a lot of two for ones uh and that's usually pretty bad but uh, what's nice about this one is it's pretty cheap, and if you are just in a mono-red strategy, you can actually deal a lot of damage with it. Uh, still don't think it's as good as Spitting Earth, but if I'm in that Spitting Earth kind of deck, it's actually not a bad consideration to take, uh, especially in a format like this where you're, again, focused less on the like crazy power level of you know regular expansion sets or something like that. Uh, Suntail Hawk is a 1-1 flyer for one white. Very simple card, but it's a 1-1 with flying for one, for one. That's actually pretty good. Uh, generally speaking, I tend to uh, not value these too highly, but uh, if I'm in that white deck, white-red maybe, some kind of like aggressive flyers deck, not bad. Uh, it's a perfectly fine early game threat. Uh, it's not going to last very long, of course, but it'll ping in the air for maybe a couple points of damage, and that's all that matters. That's all you really need it to do. Uh, of course, I still like Spitting Earth better. It's just a much po more powerful card. But if you're in that deck and you get this late in the pack, I wouldn't be too unhappy about it. Uh, Treetop Bracers is an enchant creature for one and a green. Uh, the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and can't be blocked except by creatures with flying. Uh, again, same deal with the other uh, enchant creatures. You're opening yourself up for that two for one. This is a little bit more powerful, in my opinion, and that it is more evasive focused. Uh, you can actually ideally get in for a lot of damage if you really get this on the right creature on the right board. But unfortunately, you are dependent on having the right creature and being up against the right board. I don't like to count on that kind of thing. I just think that that's a bad, uh, bad decision to make. Generally speaking, you can't count on anything from the opponent because obviously their goal is to beat you in the game. So they're going to be prepared. They're going to have blockers for this ideally. Uh, and if they don't, you're probably going to win the game anyway. So in my opinion, I don't think that this is a worthwhile card. <clears throat> Uh, Vampire Bats, very interesting art. Uh, a zero one flyer for one black, and you can pay one black and it gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn. Play this ability no more than twice each turn. Uh, I don't like this card. It's a mana sink, but it's not a very good one. Um, you have to pay mana to make this relevant every turn. Uh, and that's pretty bad. It's not like it can block anything either. <laughs> um, unfortunately, if it blocks anything, it's going to die. So I really don't like this card. I think this is just a very, very bad card. I would probably never play this that I, in, in any circumstance that I could think. It is a flyer, so there is a little bit of relevance there. If you just happen to be up against a deck that doesn't have flyers, maybe you can get through for a couple points. But it's a 1-1, one, one, or it's a 0-1, excuse me. So it's not going to last very long, in my opinion. <clears throat> 
Uh, Treasure Hunter is a 2-2 two -two for 2 and a white. Uh, when it comes into play, you, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, interesting. I feel like this is actually probably pretty powerful if you have the right artifact. Obviously, it's a 2-2 two -two for 3, so it's a little bit down on power for what you would want. However, bringing back an artifact can be really, really important. This is a core set, though, so my assumption is artifacts are not going to be the focus. Uh, and in that case, I don't know that this is something I would want to pick up. I think it's a big, bit of a speculative pick. Uh, you can certainly try it and see how it goes for your drafts, but I think I would pass on it, still go with that Spitting Earth, just because I don't know of all of the artifacts that are worthwhile in this set, at least in Limited. So that might be an incorrect call on my part, and in that case, I apologize. I just don't know the set very well. Uh, but that's kind of my assumption, again, just based on the fact that this is just a core set. <clears throat> Uh, Deathmark is a sorcery for one black. Very simply, destroy target green or white creature. Very, very easy, easy sideboard card. Very powerful sideboard card for sure, but it is a sideboard card. You're not always going to be up against a green or white deck. In that case, this is a very dead card, 100%, and you never want that. Uh, you do not main deck cards like this just because they're too focused. You can't always reliably play them. And in that instance, you don't want to be drawing this in a situation where you really, really need some relevant spell. Uh, and so as much as I like this card, and if I am in black later in the pack, 100% pick it up. You want that for that sideboard. But right now, definitely not what I'm looking for. It's a little too focused in my opinion. Uh, pyroclasm. I love pyroclasm. Uh, it's a sorcery for one and a red, deals two damage to each creature. Very classic red board sweeper, deals it in terms of burn, not just destroy all creatures, which is cool. Uh, unfortunately, that is a little bit limiting just because uh, it's only two damage to every creature, which means it's going to be good in the early game to sweep the board, but unfortunately, it's going to sweep your board too. Uh, I tend not to be too uh, overvaluing on sweepers uh, in the limited format. The only reason I say that Again, we're focused on creatures. We're focused on dealing damage on the board. Uh, and so you're going to be destroying your own creatures too, and that's not always what you want. So as much as I love this card for Constructed, I don't think it's a limited pick uh, unless you end up in a Spells Matters kinds of list. And then our rare here, which I do believe is going to be the pick, uh, Troll Ascetic uh, is 1 and 2 green for a 3-2, and it cannot be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. That's very crucial. That's now called Hexproof, but at this point, uh, it was not called that. Uh, and then you can pay 1 and a green and regenerate it. So the next time this creature would be destroyed this turn, it isn't. Instead, you tap it, remove all damage from it, and remove it from combat. So really interesting, very, very difficult to kill. Uh, makes for a great blocker uh, because you can just start regenerating it and all that kind of stuff. It's really, really good for that. Uh, but it's also not really, it, it doesn't really care about targeted removal. And I think that's huge. So honestly, this is just a really, really solid, like early to mid game threat uh, that the opponent's going to have to find a way to answer. And it's going to be really difficult for them to. I will note also, if I am taking a card like this, I'm more open to taking cards that uh, like enchant creature style cards solely because if I stack them on this, they can't target it with removal. They have to sweep it or do something like that. Uh, and that tends to be harder to do in limited. So I actually like this card. It opens up a few more possibilities for me in the, in the rest of the draft, which is great. Uh, so definitely a good rare. And I don't believe... Oh, we did get a foil here. So we have uh, Bog Wraith. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3 and a black with Swamp Walk. I don't love this card. Uh, it's probably a little bit difficult to see on the uh, camera here. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three for 4, a little understated. The Swamp Walk is going to be good. Uh, if you don't know what that does, it means if your opponent controls a Swamp, it's essentially unblockable. They cannot block it. Uh, but you're not always going to be up against an opponent with, with a Swamp. And so this could technically be relied on as a sideboard card, but I don't think it's a very, very strong uh, first pick by any means. Definitely, definitely the troll, in my opinion. I think that card is great. Uh, so that's my pick. Feel free to disagree in the comment section below if you feel the need to. I'm happy to have that conversation. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.